I don't know if they should even call it Cliffhanger 2. Yeah, that's kind of lame, right? Yeah, and it all yeah. takes place in like the Dolomites in Italy, in those mm. mountains or whatever. I'm sure it'll be thrilling scenes, but do you think it's going to make $225 million worldwide? No. Like Not Cliffhanger in 93? Not if it doesn't have Michael Rooker in it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cliffhanger, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> We're Generation X, laughing at the world today. We're getting older, but we're still gonna play. It's over. Look, you can go home now. You don't have to fight anymore. Spend the day complaining or, I don't know, celebrating on Facebook. It's over. It's over. Yes, the election is over. The election. It's in our past. Guess what? Uh, For the first time in eight years, we aren't, well, what are they going to do to stop it from happening? And da-da-da-da-da. Because not only did he win electorally, he won the beautiful uh popular vote so you can't do that to me this time you can't do it to me this time yeah he won the popular vote we have to we have to applaud i mean you may not like them but uh, two people uh joe rogan and uh elon musk elon musk bought twitter turned it into a free speech hive and uh i don't know it's just this is the weirdest presidential election in my lifetime i'm sure many of you will agree i didn't expect it to go the way that it did so quickly i thought we'd have another one of those it's just going to go until january and that a bunch of people are going to from bob's burgers are going to storm the the capitol building this time they'd be from a uh, family guy and i hope you saved your appetite because later we're all wiping our ass with the constitution uh but no it's over and i think if no matter how you feel about it i think you could take that and and hold on to it and say there's no disc well there's discord but there's no uh there's not going to be any craziness going on it's going to be business as normal uh, normal 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 perfectly normal you keep using the word i don't think it means what you think it means maybe he'll make it all four years maybe he won't maybe we'll get jd vance in there our first president with a beard since the 1800s which i imagine he'll shave if he loses weight but congratulations that, that couch is not a beard tim he, he's Listen, not married to it he did not have sex with the couch it was a love seat it's right there in the, <laughs> name. the love seat steph when, when we started recording or right before we started recording steph was telling a story about like did this happen to you today yeah this morning at like 9 a.m all right what happened I was just coming out of the doctor's office because um, I, have a, I have a sty on my eye oh. that I cannot get rid of. And, like, it'll go away, and then it keeps coming back. So, anyway. You probably get a patch. TMI. A, no, they gave, me, they gave mm-hmm. me erythromycin. Oh, gee. <laughs> yeah, so I got to, like, squirt this shit in my eye or whatever, but I've got this big, you know. Those hurt. It, Those well, hurt. Yeah. It's bothering me. When you're a little kid and you don't know what they are, I cried all the time when I had one. Well, you know, when I was a little kid, I dug in my ass and then probably wiped my eyes. But I don't do that anymore. So I don't know why I have this shit. (laughs) Well, what other... I love that you admitted that. Everybody digs it. Did you smell it afterwards? I don't think I ever smelled... Dustin does that. Any sort of butt. I'm doing that right now. (laughs) You're smelling your butt? By the way, Dustin, everybody's digging your hair. All of our, all of our ladies, uh, especially, are digging that hair. They're very counterculture. Yeah, yeah, they're that digging. Yeah. You're a fifty-year-old counterculture guy. Really, sets hey off. man, fighting Dude. the system, bra. I, th- I think that I think that you're the eye candy on here. Oh, for sure. Thanks. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's me. And yeah. <laughs> anyway, Steph, sorry. Continue. As I was saying, I came out of the doctor's office and I, this uh, tall, elderly black gentleman, I say elderly and he's probably the same age as me. But anyway, yeah, but he, yeah. he, he looks I still old. do that. I'm like, I call people yeah. old and then I remember, oh, yeah, I yeah. turned 54 the other day. Go ahead. He's probably, we're probably the same age. Um, he, he looked at me and he goes, it's a great day to be an American. Great day to wake up in America. And I was like, oh, yeah. And he goes, yeah, um, we got a man in the White House. We got strength. And I'm a veteran, and that's what we need is a strong White House. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. 
Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I didn't go. Yeah, you're right. No, I'm coming out of the doctor's office with a sty on my eye. I didn't even have <laughs> eye makeup on. And then yeah. he just is like, great yeah, thing to be in America. Our, RFK, G, RFK Jr. shuts down all the VAs. <laughs> oh, has he said that's what he's going to do? Yeah, I don't he's like shutting that. everything down. No, no regulation over health whatsoever. Oh, okay, yeah, right. That'll happen. Yeah. yeah. He, he, you have to, uh, all that stuff has to go through Congress. He can't just go, I'm going to shut down. Well, all Congress that. is Republican now, too. So, gonna yeah, but say. they're not going to do that. But no one's going to do stupid stuff like that because they will lose their seats. Cong- uh, the House is every two years. So, Steph, did you get his number? <laughs> I did not. I, what I wanted to say to him was, like, you were talking to absolutely the last person because I don't even care about, I don't care about it at all. Like who won? Who didn't win? Who's dead? Who? Who? Steph's none of it. Ni- you give a rat's ass. Yes. Oh, that must be exhausting. It yeah. is exhausting. It's exhausting not giving a crap. And then uh, somebody was telling me, and I think it was Jeff that he was going to out me for not voting. And I would just like to say, I don't give a shit. Give me something to vote for. I'm tired of this sham. Well, why does it matter if you voted or didn't vote? Well, you're going to be put on that list if you did. Yeah, your friends and family are going to know if you didn't vote. Put yeah, on a milk carton. Man. I think if anything, old Trumpy Doodle, he won't he won't round me up because I didn't vote. I didn't pick anybody. Nobody's getting rounded up. <laughs> well, we will see about that. I, a weird thing this morning happened to me. I go to this BP uh, after I drop off Gil. I got to get my scratchers. And uh, there were two people in front of me in line. And they, they left. And when the store was empty, the, there's this young guy that works there. He looks at me and goes, hey, buddy, you look tired. How are you doing today? You look a little sleepy. I said, yeah, I was up late last night watching uh, election results. And, yeah, man. He goes, Trump is back, baby. I could start making him. I'm like, what? The guy's not an American. I mean, he get, might get ready to go back to wherever it is you came from, buddy. <laughs> But he he was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I got some money and this and that. And then by the end of the conversation, he's talking about uh, the president or whatever he is of El Salvador and how he rounds up the MS-13 and locks them all up. We got law and order coming back. I'm like, and it just floored me because I didn't, you know, you don't expect that. And I just said, yeah, well, that's great. And I said, can I have my cigarettes and scratchers, please? Look out for day one, brother. Yeah. Do you feel like that minorities that voted for Trump um they're trying to find solidarity with us the yes. the whites so no. they're like because they're afraid to tell their friends that they did this but they're like whitey is gonna be like cool <laughs> I, can, I can be myself i think they're just like every everybody else who voted for them they don't like the current administration and, and they're tired of not having any money and, mm-hmm. and don't you don't don't you oh. think though totally i'm sorry dustin go ahead no i just wish it ended there yeah i wish that was the issue but it, it's it's I one of many primary so. issue. I, if the economy was great, Trump would have gotten his ass kicked. I bet there was a certain percentage of people that were like, "No woman is going to be president." Yes, no I black agree with woman that. is going to be president. <laughs> I agree with or, that. Or woman, period. Well, I don't mind if a black woman's president, but no Indian women. The, our first chance at having a Kidding. woman president is going to be like an Angela Merkel situation, where she looks like a dump truck. Um, but is 100% European, that'll be yeah. the first one that ever gets the presidency. And, you know, she's like a Janet Reno type. She can't be too attractive. She would have to be, you know, like, nah, something well, like a Gorbachev face. She has to be smart and, and yeah, exactly. know what she's talking that. about and not deflect and be able to do a press conference and not sound like an idiot every time she speaks. Which Don't you think, gig- though, we were talking about this before we started. Don't you think, though, the Democrats, if this is real at all, because I don't honestly know, it, they lost this by not having her ascend to the presidency months ago and well, just that, assuming the role. That is a very good point. They could have let her do that, but that also would have damaged them. If Biden had said in December, I've thought about it, I've talked about it with my family, I've decided that I don't think I can continue to a second term, I'm going to continue to be the president, and you're going to have a primary. Okay, so they end up having a primary. First thing that I guarantee you happens is she's not the candidate, because she dropped out before Iowa in 2020. Nobody liked her. She had she was polling at 1%. So then you would have a bunch of different people running. You might have had Amy Klobuchar run again. You might have had uh, Liz Warren run again. 
all those people would probably have been better and able to 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 do what they do. It doesn't really matter because it's over now. But they should have had a primary. They should have had a primary. They shouldn't run around calling everybody that votes for Trump Hitler because that pisses people off. There's lots of there's lots of variables to this, but the economy is always the problem. The economy. No, the and the, the, and and you know, shit's getting hot like all over the world with a bunch of stuff that may be popping off soon. And I think well, that's what it, that's a, what it has think. a lot to do with people going like, I don't think I don't think she's going to be able to deal with this. She won't be able to. Well, I said to the guy that. this morning at the at the BP, I said, uh, well, maybe now we can stop being in all these wars. And he goes, nah, man. Because you got to stay in the fucking wars. That's how you make money. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, we don't agree on that. No, and that that is one thing I would say about him is I don't really think he likes to do war. Really, you know, the the war's coming in 2028 or 2020, the end of 2027. Was it Nostradamus? So so Trump can just stay president, past the election. Now, who's the conspiracy theorist? <laughs> I just wonder what I just wonder what all these uh, alpha males are going to be talking about for the next four years because they've done podcasts on nothing but beefing well, the podcasts up Trump. made him. No, the podcasts made him. It was Rogan. It was yeah, I agree. Yo, but it, it was that's what happened. It was that push to the to that generation to that market. And I looked the two demographics in this country that voted in a majority for Donald Trump because millennials did not and. Boomers did not. So let's take those two out. The two generations that voted uh, in majority for President Trump were Gen Z and Gen X, which floored me. I didn't. I thought Gen X was totally in her corner. But I looked that up, which is weird. Uh, but what this election sort of proved is that nobody gives a shit what celebrities think. No one cares. No one cares what Taylor Swift had to say. Nobody cares what Cardi B had to say. And by the way, Cardi B this morning gets on her Instagram. She goes, this is why y'all be having a hurricane. <laughs> uh, TV news, dead. Nobody cares. Fuck, fuck the pollsters, man. Oh, pollsters, they suck. But that woman uh, it's, from it's Iowa. Super tight race. Yeah. And that That's dude that predicts funny. every election, he was fucking wrong. For the first Trump, time, yeah, since the yeah. early 80s. But Trump said that on Joe Rogan. He said, you know, I don't like polls all that much. I like them when they say I'm going to win. But he says, you know what happens with these polls? They pay you to do the poll. Who knows if they even poll people? They cost a lot of money. It's a big business. So he said that. Who knows if that's true or not? Um, but there's some p positives here. No matter, no matter who you voted for. I know a lot of people are upset. I've been looking at social media. First election uh, that I didn't get on there and act like a jerk. So I have to pat myself on the back for that. It's good four years now of not talking about this stupid stuff that, you know, your friends, you piss your friends off or they piss you. Who, you they're your friends. Who cares who they voted for? They're your friends. If they care. The cool thing is, is if uh, if you are mad about it, like you're somebody who's so invested in the Democrats winning and blah, blah, blah. You can just take, you know, the relish in the fact that now these people who have been complaining all the last four years. OK, prove it. Fix yeah. it. Yeah, it's fix on the him shit. Now. now he can fix it. So I mean, at least they'll quit with their bullshit about complaining that it's hurt. Because if he can't fix it, then we know it's yeah more than that. It's a lot more than that. There's a lot. There's <laughs> a lot, and it ain't him, and it ain't her, and I don't think either of them are going to fix it. Mm -hmm. The only thing that made me happy is that the neocons now do not have a party. Yeah, that is true. And I'm so happy about that. I'm happy that they they. They're just, they're done. Nobody cares. The, the Republicans th kicked them out. They tried to snuggle up to the Democrats and, and, you know, and a lot of people who are middle of the road went, uh-uh, we're not doing this again. We don't want any Cheneys in our administration. We don't want any Bushes. Our you first take, felon president. You take the good, you take the bad, you take them both, and there you have the 2024 election. And we'll stop talking about it so much. I ordered that Thanksgiving pizza, by the way. Oh, you did? Where? Yeah. From Kroger. I'm going to throw that away and just eat cats and dogs from now on. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, somebody's going to have to. They're going to deport all the other ones. <laughs> yeah. I bet you nobody gets deported. And then everybody that thought they were, we're going to be mad. Anyway, we don't care. I mean, we're, we talk about the culture. We talk about pop culture. We talk about the things. And this is the thing. And we don't have to talk about it next week because it's over. Shall we move on? Please. Yeah. All right. 
Um, rest in peace to Quincy Jones. I mean, a lot of things have been overlooked because of all the crazy news that's going on. Uh, Quincy Jones passed away. Probably one of the most celebrated uh, producers in music history, right? He gave us Thriller. He got a bunch of musicians to tell MTV, if you don't play Thriller, you can't play our videos. And I'm talking about white musicians because when MTV started, it was as lily white as a piece of paper. Um, and they weren't playing Michael Jackson. So that album, Thriller, was an amazing album, still an amazing album. Sure, Michael has his problem. But uh, Quincy Jones did an awful lot of cool stuff. And his daughter is uh, was from The Office and, and other things. Uh, he did the, uh, the theme to Sanford and Son. And that's all I care about. <laughs> yeah, Rashida, she did that amazing documentary about him. Yeah, yeah that was a real good documentary. Yeah, he started it's... Will Smith's career. Yep, in acting anyway. He's just a, he was a good guy, and uh, a lot of people loved him. And it's just weird when stuff like that, stuff like him passing, just gets drowned out by everything else. I mean, we are the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He had a birthday with Michael Caine. That's from that list one of your posts. He was a wonderful and unique human being. I was lucky to have known him, says Michael Caine. But definitely rest in peace to uh, Mr. Quincy Jones. Now, uh, do you think the squirrel had anything to do with it? The, the squirrel? The squirrel killed? didn't help. Peanut did not help. What happened to Peanut? No, that did not help. But you know, Peanut appeared, I think, on the OnlyFans page while they were making porn. That guy and his wife had an OnlyFans. Because <laughs> everyone needs to have a wild rodent running around the room while you're naked. Uh, excuse me. It was a tame rodent. Thank you very much. <laughs> did you not know that part of the story, Steph? No. Now I want a sanctuary. Yeah. From the truth. Well, get a squirrel and start an OnlyFans <laughs> with uh, your husband. And then there you go. I just thought he was a cute little squirrel in an apron on TikTok, and you know, who wore a cowboy hat. Yeah, I mean, oh. I would bite too if someone came into my home and was trying to take me away. Yeah, that was kind of a lame thing that happened, and it's you know, it pissed a lot of people off because the governor and Schumer were like, "Hey, hey, come on, come on, hey, hey, knock it off." Not cool. But speaking of the Twin Tiers or New York area, which this gentleman lived in Pine City with his wife and, or his partner and all the animals, Pine City being... Uh, and the only fans must not have been making any fucking money at all well, <laughs> living in Pine City. Well, the guy, the guy is a huge dick. Um, but they're from Connecticut. Compared to who? Me. Well, that's <laughs> Compared, to <Peanut. laughs> Compared to Peanut. Compared to Peanut. Peanut has a bigger dick than I do. <laughs> He's got them squirrel nuts. The, uh, the our town Mansfield, Pennsylvania went viral. So Jeff, Jeff and I are from uh, a town called Mansfield, Pennsylvania, which is right up there by the New York State border. And uh, our town went viral. Why did our town go viral, Jeff? They played the clip on on John Oliver's show of of them interviewing this lady on the streets of Mansfield and about? the dude uh, just about the election and stuff. Mm-hmm. And the dude standing next to her, her boyfriend or whatever, has a shirt on that says, don't bully me or I'll come. <laughs> and, and they didn't blur it out. They did not blur it. They must not have gotten it, huh? Yeah. It is overwhelming because then it turns into, okay, so there's pros and cons with this person and there's pros and cons with this person. It's turning out to where my, my generation doesn't want to vote. I'm going to choose to believe that that woman is not the voice of her generation because that voice is obviously standing right beside her. What a shirt. And I want it on the record. I am not bullying that guy right now. I wouldn't do that because, you know. Oh, so this aired um, on, a, I guess, a TV station from either Binghamton. Yeah, the local news. John Oliver's team, they always comb through the local news for interesting shit like this, and they found it. But a bunch of people from Mantua were saying, hey, that's my apartment in the background. Uh, let's see. What? Yeah. Oh, my God. They're looking right at our friend Ben's father's church. Yeah. Well, it's now his church, I think. And uh, that's that. Yeah. I, I partied in that place. Yeah. Not the church. <laughs> I went to vacation Bible school at that church. Don't bully me. I'll come. <laughs> so they're right outside of Fox Hole Hollow, which is a. Uh, a brew York, pub. York Holo. York Holo. Yeah. Which is a brew pub right there in our old town. Right across from the funeral home. They are. They're right across from Winston's funeral home. 
That's crazy. Oh, well, Mansfield, good job going viral. I think <laughs> last time they went viral was what? Didn't the Walendas live there? If you know who the Walendas are, they were the daring young people on the flying trapeze. The and flying Walendas brothers? Yeah. No. Yeah, the Walendas. And there was the lady who had, had cancer, so she was. Uh, she had a. Fi- um, she had, she a had an artificial foot. limb. Yeah, leg. Yeah, and she would still go on those tight ropes. Wow. With just the one limb. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she would wear the fake leg and do it <laughs> for balance. My yeah. lord. Yeah, imagine doing that, how you wouldn't be able to feel anything. Wow. All right. Well, Mansfield, we love you. Who's the I most? See, I want to see you bullying that guy, though. I'm not going to bully that guy. I don't want to. <laughs> he is all over me. Who is the most famous person? Tom McMillan. From Mansfield. Hilfiger. Yeah. Now he's. Tommy Hilfiger from Elmire. Oh, okay. Tom McMillan, former basketball player and, and what was he, a senator? He was a He's on the cover of Sports Illustrated. He was a congressman. Congressman. Mm-hmm. It says here that Jane Mansfield is from Mansfield, but I don't believe that at nah, all. I don't think so. Uh, the most famous person from Mansfield, Pennsylvania. Let's see. Scroll down here. Noted people. Minnie M. Argetsinger. She was an American Baptist missionary in China and the Philippines for 32 years. Uh, Matt Kurzajewski was a race driver. And then Tom McMillan, former professional baseball player and former congressman. Basketball uh, player. Yeah, and former congressman from Maryland. He, uh, where did it say? He played for the Hawks. Yep. His mom used to give me cookies all the time. Yeah, they lived in that really cool house. Yeah. Uh, they had a nice house. And his brother, uh, Jay, was also really good at basketball, played with my uncles, uh, his older brother. He was all, oh, you know what he was? He was the, uh, he was that co-chair of President's Council on Physical Fitness and Sports. Yeah. Name. So there's your Mansfield knowledge. And now this guy's the most famous guy from Mansfield. Yes. The probably me too. Ah, oh, what's in the car? There's enough time to get out. Oh. I think. Everybody watch Penguin episode seven. I guess they call this the penultimate episode because there's only one left. Yeah, yes. and it wasn't called Top Hat for the reasons that we thought it was going to no. be. Right? Not at all. No, why was it called Top Hat? Because they watched Top Hat. He watched Top Hat with his mom while his brothers were drowning. Yeah. Yes, he knew. Spoiler that, alert. This, yeah, shit, we should have said spoiler. But by the way, this episode showed everybody, uh, he's not an anti-hero. He's a fucking piece of shit. Emily mm-hmm. Mead did really good as his mom. Wow. Young, young mom. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he just, you realize that where we thought that it was his mother that created the personality that's made him the penguin, he created his mother. And then she yeah. created him. Salvatore, done. And uh, I had a feeling he wasn't going to make it through the whole season. That was yeah. funny, though. He didn't get to kill him. Yeah. Oh, he had a heart attack. He's, oh, you died on me. Don't you die on me. It was messed up, though, what he did to his brothers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what do you guys think? Do you think that he knew when he was laying there with his mom that those boys were drowning? Do you think he knew it? Yes, I don't think I don't necessarily know that they were. He thought they were going to die. I think he wanted to punish them for going down on that lower level while they were playing freeze tag or whatever. I think this is going to be a fifty-fifty split on people that watch the show between who thinks that he knew and those that thought that he. I think wasn't maybe he didn't, 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 didn't care if they did, but I don't. Yeah. I don't necessarily think that. I'm with Jeff on he that. Thought they he- were gonna. Yeah, I don't think he knew that they were going to die, but he was happy that they had. Yeah. Because he got his mom all to himself. Yeah, to himself, yeah. himself, yeah. Right. Well, we have one episode left. Obviously, he's not going to die because he's going to be in the next Batman movie. What do you think? Sophia gets locked up back in uh, Arkham, and he takes over. Uh, She'll still be around. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, the the show can't exist without him and her. Well, what's the resolution? Go ahead. Well, I have a I have a theory though. If you guys tell me if this is crazy, because you did say that Victor is going to be in the next one, right? That's yeah. The... Yeah. Okay, so I have a theory that why did she leave Victor alive? 
like Victor's with her now. Oh. And that's why you didn't see him again the entire episode. He never came back with an army. He never did any of that. And how she kept saying she wants to hurt him so bad. And I think that it will hurt Oz okay. to see Victor be with her. Yeah, maybe because yeah. he, he sees theory. himself in Victor. I mean, if the mother dies, the mother dies. And I think that's how he feels about it. I mean, he would be upset, but they've already had that conversation in the last episode. She's ready, you know, yeah. willing she's to re- die. She's ready to check out. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it'll I, – I don't know. I was kind of questioning if the brother thing was what Colin Farrell was talking about that you would really hate the Penguin for by the end of the season because there's not much left. For no. him to do to be any worse than he already, already <laughs> no, she, is. Well, one more episode, and we'll talk about it next time. And who, who put the cliffhanger thing in here? I just put it in there because Solon dropped out, so I don't know if they should even call it cliffhanger two. Yeah, that's kind of lame, right? Yeah. Why are they and, calling it cliffhanger if he's not in it? That's what I'm saying. He was supposed to be in it, and then he dropped out because the director that he wanted uh, was no longer attached. Mm. So then he didn't want to do it anymore. And Cliffhanger's not that good of a movie anyway. Why would they make a sequel? That's, yeah, I mean, why are they acting like this is Road Warrior? Like the first Road Warrior it's or something? It's just any any property from the 90s that had any type of cult following at all. That they're, you know, trying to blip, you know make more money off of. Make Demolition Man too, and then you know bring out the uh, seashell so you can wipe your ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, not to mention the fact that they're making. I mean, Lily James is going to be the star, so they're you know re they're rechickifying it, so they're going to make the chick be the oh. ul- ultimate whatever. And Pierce Brosnan, and it all yeah. takes place in like the Dolomites in Italy in those mm. mountains or whatever. I'm sure it'll be thrilling scenes, but do you think it's going to make? Two hundred twenty-five million dollars worldwide. No, like cliffhanger in ninety-three. Not if it no. doesn't have Michael Rooker in it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cliffhanger, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys? Well, I know Dustin didn't, but did you guys watch Tom Brady uh, whenever he was commenting on the Lions game on Sunday? Mm-mm. He Brian Branch got ejected from the game for what a lot of people thought was very stupid. They tried to act like it was some helmet to helmet. And it, you watch the replay, there was no reason for them to eject him. But either way, Brady voiced his opinion about it, that he thought it was crap in his own way. And a lot of people thought he was going to get in trouble because, as you said, Tim, he is uh, part owner in the Raiders. And that's part of the rules. Whenever you're an owner, you're not allowed to say any kind of negative things about the league at all. Mm-hmm. And it turns out they're not going to do anything to him because he's Tom Brady. Tom Brady. <laughs> Tom Brady can do whatever he wants. <laughs> Give him a break. His ex-wife is pregnant. Yeah, I know, with a karate instructor. <laughs> uh, Jason Kelsey, on the other hand, he may be in trouble for uh, smashing that dude's phone at Penn State. Calling him the F word. Well, yeah, he called he Travis. Repl- <laughs> he said, now who's the F word? I think he called. He said that he was the f word for dating Taylor Swift, which yeah, to me the, is like the okay. fan did. But but after Jason smashed his phone, he said, "Now who's the f word?" Oh, that's been verified. He said that as he was walking away. <laughs> now who's the f? <laughs> Gave like a heartfelt apology on Monday Night Football, and. I don't know. Most people are like, oh, what are you even apologizing for? But the cops are still investigating this. So he may have to actually dig in his couch cushions and pay somebody <laughs> something. Yeah, I don't know. Kind of find some money in his beard. <laughs> yeah. Here you go. She pulls it out. Of <laughs> I cannot tell you. If I had the money that these guys had, I would be snatching people's phones from their hands and breaking them all the time. I'd be like, <laughs> you know, send me the bill. Smash. <laughs> you like, open a cell phone store, just give them your card. Come pick up your new phone. <laughs> You just have your bodyguard that's walking with you, carry phones with you in boxes. So you just break one and give him one. Oh, especially especially anybody who is um, arguing about a bill on speakerphone in public. Oh, God. That's the first one. Um, I know that you guys are probably definitely familiar with the Rizzler. <laughs> and, and Baby Justice, or I'm sorry, Big Justice. And Baby you know, Gronk. 
ba- and well, there's baby Gronk too, as you know, that's the kid who's supposed to be the next, his dad says that he's going to be the greatest football player in the world, I guess. Mm-hmm. And, um, he's assumed that title of baby Gronk for Gronkowski. And he, they've done some questionable things too with this kid where they've had like older women in videos with him. And it's kind of, well, uh, but the Rizzler, he, you know, he hangs out with, uh, you know, big justice and whatever the hell AJ and they do all that. You got the boom that makes you want to, blow your brains out yeah yeah well baby gronk has challenged the rizzler to a fight they're too young to fight who's gonna be on the, on the tyson paul undercard yeah that... <laughs> <laughs> no way the well, kid won't get... go ahead i just think it's so weird because i mean in the article that i found this and they were exploring these kid influencers like, what are their lives going to be like? If if kid actors are messed up, what are kid influencers going to be like when they get older? Way more messed up. Eh, really? They don't have to go through a system of people that can manipulate yeah. them and besides their parents. Right. It's just a parent. Right. So but you have, e- you have every way, but you have every person in the world being able to talk to you. That's true. Via the platform that you're posting on. Yeah. Women so, sending you pictures and stuff. I mean, true. you know, little Riz, little Rizzler's always doing the, you know, he got famous for being doing the Chad face. Mm-hmm. But his Chad face is very like, what is this? Because he's just like, he's pinching his little, little chubby chin. It's not really a Chad <laughs> It's not really a Chad Chunk face. face. But. Chunk face. Yeah, anyway. But who's, who's, who's got, who you got your money on? Gronk or the Riz? I'm going baby Gronk. I'll have to see what the odds are. Yeah, I wonder if this is going to be on bar stool. I would pay to watch this fight. I would pay to watch this fight. If we start legalizing uh, kids fighting each other for our entertainment, we know that no matter who won the presidential election, we are done. Get Gil in the ring. No, Gil's a passive. <laughs> you know though. Address him. <laughs> you know though, if Gronk if Gronk knocked him out, he he would absolutely say, "You got the boom. <laughs> you got the boom." <laughs> Apparently, Eddie Murphy is set to play George Clinton in a bio from the director Bill Condon, the one that did Dreamgirls. Funkadelic. He should have gotten an Oscar for Dreamgirls. Mm. Yes, he should have. But I'm uh, and this is based on George Clinton's book. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering what you guys thought about Eddie Murphy as George Clinton. I think he could do it. Yeah. I mean, of course he can do it, but I'm 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 more concerned that Eddie Murphy in his later career is going to get pigeonholed for playing every black man we ever yeah. looked at growing up. That's true. Dolomite, Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah, he played I mean, Dream Girl. Any any of the. I mean, when it yeah, when it comes to a figure, and you know that that seems to be who they go to. Which I like. Believe me, I would rather see these than those stupid family movies where he's thirty characters. Oh yeah, I know. Well, I was that they're was just one of you could pull it off. They're dumb. I get it, but I still like those. I like. I'm not going to start worrying about it until they ask him to play Bill Cosby. They should ask him to now play. Now that Bill. would be worth watching. <laughs> <laughs> he should do a dark fictional biopic of Bill Cosby. I'm going to put something in your drink in the bo bo Um. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. That's it. We just wrap me up. Wrap you up? All right, well, I'll do quick headlines then. New York Assemblyman introduces Peanuts Law, says investigation request ignored. That, of course, about Peanut, the uh, porn star squirrel. Willie Nelson talks about grief, legalizing marijuana, and that Beyonce collaboration that no one liked. Gypsy Rose Blanchard reveals who fathered her baby after taking a paternity test. Most people respond with, who is Gypsy Rose Blanchard? (laughs) And those are the headlines. Back to you, Steph. (laughs) That's perfect. No, we're all done here. We're all done on my side. Hello, America. I'm Casey Kasem. This week, we look back to November 9th, 1989. The number one song was Blame It on the Rain by Millie Vanilli. Those two went on to have a long career, selling out six straight weeks at the Sphere in Las Vegas. (laughs) The number one movie was Look Who's Talking, starring John Travolta and that lady from Cheers. The number one television show in the country was The Cosby Show, starring my best friend and all-around great guy, Bill Cosby. (laughs) Anytime Bill would come over to the house, I'd leave him there with Jeannie, 
I'd come home, she'd be asleep, and he'd be gone. <laughs> you must have told her so many great jokes that she fell asleep after a night of laughter. Anyway, I love you, Bill. Hope everything's okay. <laughs> and in the 1989 World Series, the A's beat the Giants. The A's won, and it was the first sweep since 1976 when the Reds swept the Yankees. And happy birthday to <laughs> Jeffrey S. Mailhot, also known as the Rhode Island Ripper. <laughs> Jeffrey is an American serial killer who murdered three prostitutes in Woodsocket, Rhode Island between 2003 and 2004. After strangling his victims to death, Mailhot dismembered their corpses and... <laughs> Oh, no. And dismembered their corpses with a saw, placed them in garbage bags, and threw them in dumpsters. I hope he had sex with them first. I know I would have, or maybe even after. After one of his victims survived, Melhot was arrested and sentenced to three life terms in prison. And now, on with the countdown. All right, uh, podcast universe. Um, before we get to the YouTube comments and polls, uh, I really didn't listen to much. I listened to Elon on Rogan just to see what that was all about, and uh, I've been sucked into an audio book as of late, and not the one that I. Fin By the way, my my cousin's is finished, and uh, it is now being submitted to Audible. So as soon as that's ready, I want you all to give it a shot. Dustin, have you have you gotten any farther in it? No, I was. I didn't want to go in further. I wanted to listen to the completed one. Dustin hates it. You can just say it. <laughs> I don't hate it. I like it, actually. <laughs> he hates the reading. More than, he likes the story and like the narration. I started listening to my best buddy, Tim Dillon, on Rogan. You did? Uh, just to see what he had to say. Yeah. How was that? I haven't listened to that yet. That's all right. Yeah? They, they, they tell you to kill them. yourself? They tell no. you to off yourself? They keep repeating the same shit over and over again, though. Wow. Wow. Is it post election or pre election? It's election day, so they don't know the results yet. Uh what else? Um Steph, that's the only one you got? Oh uh, yeah, I fin I finished it. It was like yeah. twelve episodes. So I finished it in the red clay. Uh that was like Tim Allen recommended it a while ago. And um I just had never pulled it up i guess and i started listening to it because he recommended another one that this sean kipe guy did and then i found this and it's all about the dixie mafia out of winder Ooh. georgia you gotta yeah. send me that one because i'm oh. almost done with kill list oh this uh. is so good tim you'll love it and it, i mean i'm telling you by the end of it there were several times in this podcast where i am listening to it and i start crying it really yeah. got to me in some parts but uh, especially about uh billy burt um some of the things that happened to him when he's in prison, but Stony Burt, I, I think we should all go to his distillery in Winder at Rock okay. Solid Distillery and let's go get some peach brandy because I hear it's pretty damn good. Okay, but okay, that, yeah, I will send you that podcast. You you definitely will like. You'll love it. I'm not usually into the true crime thing, but now I'm on the second one that Steph recommended, and it's good. The Kill List one is good, except for all the. We contacted her. I we, know. You just got to take... We called the FBI and no one thought we were serious. Blah, 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 if you blah. take that part out of it, though, don't you? Uh, you just... uh, somebody's trying to kill me. Don't you love the backstories of the people? The stories are, are great. The stories are awesome. Because yeah, I'm always like, why does somebody want this person dead? I love to find out the whole... How you get to that point where they're hiring someone to kill your ass. Are the dumb parents who let their their daughter go to Beverly Hills to hook up yeah. with some loser? That piece of trash. Well, he got his. I don't want that. To he it. did. Yeah, don't spoiler alert. But yeah, but check out in the red clay. I, I will say this much: there, you're going to hear about this one lady, Ruth Chancy, mm -hmm. on in the red clay. She was kind of like the only chick in the Dixie Mafia, and I knew a lady who cared for her well into her. She was in her 90s, I think, at the time, 80s, something like that. She took care of her, and she admitted to her that she killed a bunch of people in a house. Dang. Which, it's in the paper. It was in 1976 where they uh, she set a house on fire, and it killed like five kids. Jeez. That's yeah. some peng penguin shit right there. Sophia, I've been working with you. 
Why'd you work with me? Eh? Eh? Okay, go ahead. I listened to uh, Tom Hanks on Conan. Is that good? It was okay. They didn't talk too much about the new movie he's got coming out. Forrest Gump 2 or whatever it's called. Forrest Gump 2. And I uh, listened to Ego Nuotum on uh, Fly on the Wall. That was pretty good. A lot of backstage shit from like the writers, writers' room and stuff at Saturday Night Live. It's very interesting. I listened to um, Happy, Sad, Confused with uh, Tom Hanks. It was good. It was good. He kind of talked a little more about uh, how he thinks of his movies because he had brought up the uh, that statement that crew that uh, Hanks made a couple of months ago where he said I only made four pretty good movies in my career, <laughs> and he was like, people blow that out of proportion. He was like, he goes, let let me bump it up to eight. He goes, maybe it was eight good movies that I did. But um, it was good, and uh, also listened to Tell Him Steve Dave uh, this week, as usual, and moved hawk, on to... Hawk Cua. Yeah, the hawk, yeah, hawk <laughs> Cua episode, um, and moved on to the fourth book in um, Dungeon Crawler Carl. Nice. Yeah. I signed back up for Audible, so the next month I will get the first one. Cool. Meanwhile, over in Conyers, they're still proudly serving East Metro Atlanta, and they have been for 40 years. Atlanta Pizza and Euro is the place to be this fall. Did you hear we changed it? It's football, cold weather, unless you live in Atlanta. Uh, their featured beer selection this fall is Monday Night Brewing's Oktoberfest. It is a German-style Marzin, Marzin Lager with noble German hops for a subtle bitterness and a smooth Balanced, finished, perfect for the fall. They've got the best gyros, gyros, euros, pizza, hot subs, and Greek and Italian specialties around. Dustin knows he eats there every day. Stop by Monday through Friday from 11 to 9 p.m. and on Saturdays from 12 to 9. They are closed on Sundays. Tuesday nights, they have team trivia from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Bring your smartest friends and test your trivia knowledge against the best Conyers has to offer. So if Dustin's there that night... You might have a good shot at winning. Their food truck is also available. Just contact Mike at 770-483-6228 for more details or to schedule your event. And Mike says, thanks for listening to the best podcast around and for all your business and continued support. Thank you for all your support to the best pizza place. Do you have a commercial or residential construction printing need? Well, what are you waiting for? Dummy. Contact LDI Repro Printing of Athens. They've been in Athens since 2005, which is almost 20 years. With a fast turnaround and affordable prices, call 706-316-9366 or email them at Athens at LDILine.com. Guys, are you reading the online comments? Gotta read some of these comments. I'm loving your guys' comments. You're reading your own comments? Yeah, they're really good. I worked hard on them. The secret is don't read the comment cards. Uh, we're going to do some uh, YouTube comments. By the way, when you're watching this video, just, you know, you feel like leaving a comment or whatever. You know, you have that opportunity or option or whatever. It's right down below. Type something. Uh, let's see. We have something from ATL Clutch. Cool hair, Dustin. See, I told you. Everybody's taking your hair. Uh, Michelle Rose says, you guys are crazy. Tony did great. So judgmental. It was wonderful. Was it wonderful? Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> Come on. A little overblown and obviously uh, not effective. Uh, the blowback. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Brian and Chewy Go Hiking says Kamala is worse at speaking than. Um, Flash uh, Fuxi says Schooner Tuna, the tuna with a heart. I like that. You <laughs> uh, Reaper says glad we can have opposing views without being killed. I'm a new Trump supporter. I just couldn't stand what's been happening for the past four years. I don't understand how anyone would think she could do any better job when she's been at the helm anyway. Trump is a crap person, but a better option. It's just some, I'd say probably a, a big, huge chunk of those voters. Probably a majority of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say a majority, but a lot of them. Fuxi also says, kayfabe, baby. And uh, at least my dog loves me. <laughs> says, Lordy, just woke up and heard you talking about trick-or-treating. Brought back my first memories of 1970 doing just that in Shambly and Tucker. Good morning. And good morning to you. 
I imagine <laughs> it was fun. Nobody goes trick or treating door to door in either of those towns now. But we had it in our. You didn't have a trick or treating day in Tucker. No, we have our street. Our whole we have two cul de sacs at the end of our street, and there's plenty of houses. Everybody's bag gets filled up with candy. Usually, people have it left over. And I was the smart one who said, "I'd like some Butterfingers this year," and I've been eating all of them. <laughs> all right, Dustin does the polls, and now we're gonna. Well, you know the online poll. <laughs> uh, we have two polls, and Dustin uh, said, "Do you think podcasters have an influence on elections?" Absolutely, they're the major voice now. One, bigly, at 56%. Maybe, but not much. Came in at 44%. And no way, it's all about the news. Zero, which is absolutely true. Uh, do you think comedians are crossing new boundaries in politics? Uh, only sometimes one was 75%. Uh, no, they're better off with regular comedy at 17%. And yes, they're the new political commentators. At eight percent, I think that poll speaks for itself. All right, let's take a break. Come back and do views or snooze. We got wrap up. Is views or 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 and snooze. snooze. And we're back. We are back. Time for Jeff and views or snooze. Last week was music by John Williams, which I started watching. I haven't finished yet. And Time Cut, which I watched, wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. It was it was bad, That's but you. it was it was a, a kind of fun movie. I kind of figured out who the, who the bad guy was real fast, though. Yeah, and uh, Joker too, but you know I'm never going to watch that. Yeah, you don't want to end up homeless. <laughs> <laughs> this week, the uh, Netflix is releasing the first two episodes of the Countdown to Tyson Paul. Comes out on November twelfth or November seventh, and the third one comes out on the twelfth. How how long are these episodes? Know, probably little thirty minute previews of the the fight, upcoming when, fight. When is the fight? The fifteenth. I think. I want to watch the fight. I don't know that I can watch all these things, but maybe You're not going to watch the the hype. Eh. Mike Tyson's going to beat him anyway. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Right. I'm going I'm to review these. I am Mike. Uh, Netflix is releasing the show, a new reality series called like Investigation you have, Alien. You have it in quotes. I love that. <laughs> well, it's called Investigation Alien. How can it be talking? a reality series? Is it at the border? or? Is these... <laughs> uh, you going to watch that? I'm going to watch Yeah, it's probably views from me. Yeah, and then uh, A&E's have a show called Extreme Road Ragers. It mm -hmm. starts on the 11th. This is just your uh, car dash cam. Mine? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have road anymore, but I did at one point. <laughs> Pretty bad. Uh, but, yeah, I'm too afraid of getting shot. I'll watch that one. But more than likely, the only one I'm going to watch is the Investigation Alien series, which starts when? Friday? Uh, let's see. The 8th, yeah. yeah. All right. Let's do our staff picks. I'll go first. Uh, my staff pick this week is Batman Resurrection by John Jackson Miller the novel or an audio book that just came out um, and it was recommended I saw Kevin Jackson posted about it in the Radio Shack on Facebook and I thought you know I haven't I, this is intriguing and he gave it such a, a good review that I went and got the book and I was hooked right away it's, it's a direct sequel to the 1989 Batman movie and uh, it deals sort of with the aftermath of the Smilex. Remember the, the yeah. ass? Mm -hmm. And it's a cool story, and I won't spoil any of it. But if you're into Batman, and especially that one, it's really, really good. And I think uh, you'll like it. And bonus, there's going to be another one after that. And I guess they lead into uh, Batman Returns. I didn't really have a staff pick, uh, but I did listen to Steve Martin on Alan Alda's podcast. It was from the very end of September. It was a good interview. I didn't know Alan Alda had one. Yeah, Me either. Alda, clear, clear and vivid, it's called. You listen to it all the time. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> but I do listen to it when he has a good guest on or, or when he has some of his, his buddies from Mac on there. Mine is a YouTube channel. Uh, it's a music reaction channel called Molly Boy TV on YouTube. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a young British kid who is, uh, he'd been into hip hop his, his whole life and is discovering like 80s metal and 80s glam rock 
Well, that's and cool. Watching watching somebody who's never heard this music before enjoy it and get into it and and really get into it. It's kind of a it's kind of neat, and uh, plus you get to hear a bunch of you know cool stuff on there. But um, Molly Boy TV, check it out. Nope. Uh, mine is a new show on HBO called uh, Before They Kill Again. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? There's yeah. only one episode out so far, and um, it was a really good episode. Uh, but it's basically, you know, they kill and they catch them before they before they kill again. Wow! Because you know these are all these are all people who are going to potentially be serial killers, right? Yes. So they catch them early on in their career before they can really blossom and take off but these are people you can tell even by their first murder they're definitely going to do it again but they do, get them do any of these people have a history of in their childhood of having to lift up the toilet seat to watch the poop float away when you flush it mm-hmm. i think you i think you're good mm-hmm. on that one mm-hmm. no. okay no. all right brought up yeah Mm-mm. that hasn't been brought up <laughs> i mean it's maybe yeah it's maybe maybe all right well thank you guys uh, let's do some plugs real quick. My latest episode of the podcast can be found. Uh, you, you can listen to it on the WSB radio app, or you can find it on your favorite podcatcher. It's called The Popcast with Tim Andrews on WSB. My guests, I had two last week, and you can check out my interviews with YouTuber and now, of course, actor Lily Singh and uh, the young Luke David Bloom, who lives right here in Atlanta, who's been in a ton of television shows. He has a new movie out right now called Lost on a Mountain in Maine. And, of course, Lily Singh is in a movie that's out right now with... It's an animated movie called Hit Pig with Jason Sudeikis and a whole bunch of other people. And uh, look for a new episode this weekend if you're in the city. And you can listen to it on 95.5 WSB. You can become a Radio Labyrinth Patreon member. It's very simple. Just go to patreon.com forward slash Tim Andrews. And you will have access every week at any level, by the way, that you come in on. Um, to our after show, our show that we record after this show. It's called Radios in the Dark. It's our weekly Patreon only show, and you can get it. We didn't do it last week, but we are doing it this week. Um, so uh, just go there and sign up at any level. You know, you'll you'll have access. Uh, please uh, like and uh, and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit that uh, alert button. And uh, leave a comment. We love reading your comments. You can be silly or or not silly, uh, or anything that you want to do. You can even suggest uh, bits and stuff. Go ahead, please do that. And uh, of course, if you're listening on an audio uh, platform, leave us a, a review there and let us know that you've done it. Um, so yeah, all that jazz. Um, you can become an executive producer at the twenty-five dollar level, which gives you a credit because you're actually producing this show. Uh, and uh, you get that read every single week. And if you're new, you get a T-shirt from our T-shirt shop, and I will either create something for you, I'll do a doodle for you, or you can pick out of a whole bunch I have, and I'll print it out and mail it to you. So uh, thank you to John Allen, Matt Carter, Chris Chandler, Mike D., Jim Fortner, Terry Fuller, Roby Neely, Jeff Peterson, Tim Slayton, and Brian and DJ Chelsea Smith. I guess that does it for this week. So uh, I hope somebody's, I hope everybody's cool. Until next week, please remember to keep it. Well, when you say all good things come to an end, what's that got to do with this show? Lost in the radio.